Hey, hey, everybody, what's going on? It's your girl, No Mercy here. It's Tuesday night, so you already know what time it is. It's time for No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. Some of y'all probably already know who I am. For those of you that are new here, welcome. My name is Brooke Millbrook. I am your host, formerly known in the fight game as Brooke No Mercy Deerdorf. I'm a retired professional boxer, held the WBC lightweight title until I retired, and I was inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame last year. I've been through some good, some bad, and of course, a lot of BS in the sport of women's boxing, but welcome to my platform. This is where we talk the talk and we walk the walk. We'll bring out the truth in women's boxing. We're going to talk to pioneers of the sport, past boxers, current boxers, even future boxers. We'll be getting down and dirty, speaking the truth of what takes place in women's boxing behind the scenes. You don't want to miss a single show, so please make sure that you like, subscribe, and you share this so we can get some more people um, to help support No Punches Full with No Mercy. But hopefully everybody saw who we have on the show today. I'm super excited. Today I'm sitting down with another boxing icon in the sport of women's boxing, Kelsey Jeffries. In the amateurs, Kelsey won the California Golden Gloves from 1997 to 1999. She had an amateur record of 9-2 and two before turning pro in July of 1999. Now, as a professional, she held the WIBF America's Featherweight, the California Women's Featherweight, the WIBA America's Junior Lightweight, IFBA World Featherweight, IBA Super Bantamweight, and GBU Featherweight titles. She was trained by former two-time world champion, Buddy McGirt. And listen, y'all, she was in the ring with the best there is that the sport had to offer um, during the era. She was in with such as Anna Houlton, Ronda Luna, Melissa Hernandez, Jackie Nava, Melissa Del Val, Layla McCarter, Joe Wyman, Alicia Ashley, Laura Serrano, Yvonne Trevino, that's just to name a few of the greats that she's been in the ring with. She did end her career with an outstanding record of 41 wins, 11 losses, 2 draws. Kelsey was also inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame in 2020, awarded the IFBA Fighter of the Year in 2003, and Fighter of the Month July 2002 on one the one and only women's boxing platform, WBAN. She most definitely earned her ring name, the Road Warrior, and her willingness to fight all over the U.S., as well as in Germany and Poland. And she took on all opponents, who were, and even opponents that were significantly bigger than her natural 122 pounds. Please help me welcome Kelsey Jeffries to the show. Kelsey, what's up, Chan? It's such an honor to have you in here. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy um, but I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing a little bit of your journey with the world. Yeah, no worries. Good to be here. Good, good. Um, I hope all has been well. I know you're you're busy doing so many things nowadays, but um, it's kind of it's kind of fun to reminisce and and kind of look back at all your achievements. Uh, and you have so many to speak of. So um, I know everybody's excited to have you on the show. I had lots of comments. So. Um, to start us off, tradition fashion, can you kind of just take us back to the very beginning? Tell us a little bit about your childhood and like what led you to boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a uh, classified, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I am. Um, so yeah, you know, I grew up in Hawaii, and it's a little tough for a white girl, and uh, you know, everybody has their life issues, so. You know, I didn't play well with uh, other people in sports, so you know, I. I I I liked boxing. I liked uh, you know the one one on one combat, no team players. You know, so that's probably why I got into boxing. I got you. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, I mean, they you you always got your team behind you, but it's definitely just you. I mean, people yeah. always. Say, it's good to have a great team behind you, but once you're in the ring, it's it's just you. Like they can't help you. Right. <laughs> it's just you. Um, so the first time that you ever stepped into a boxing gym, I, I kind of explained to people nowadays, like the girls have it much better now, but back, like when I first stepped into a gym, um, females weren't always so welcome in the gym. Did you have any trouble when you first started boxing with like trainers or other fighters taking you seriously or wanting you around because you were female? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was in, I got in a gym in Hawaii, so, you know, a little Holly girl, you know, it was tough for me, but, you know, I took my, I took my pounds, took my lickings and took my, you know, uh, took, took all the beatings I could take and it made me a fighter. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, you kind of, you got to prove yourself, especially um, back then you really had to prove yourself and earn their respect and, and show them that you could, you know, take it and you weren't going to quit. That was, that was always their main goal, I think, was to make you quit, make a, make us all quit. But Absolutely. You know, and we, we definitely weren't having that. No. Um, Collins has got a couple questions. Oh, he wants to know what was your favorite fight? Favorite fight? I don't know about fight. For me personally, or do you mean like other fighters? I think he means what was your favorite fight you were in? Like what was your, your if you like your your favorite fight or best fight that you had? Uh, well, um, the the fight with uh, um, Jackie Nava was a great fight. Um, it was a tough fight. It was a, I felt I won that fight, but you know. Yeah. It was a great fight. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, their second question was, who is your favorite boxer? Wow, uh, Arturo Gatti. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I like that. Um, so back to this. So you, like me, had a very short amateur career. You had 11, only 11 fights, 9 and 2. I think I had 15 fights before going pro. There just wasn't many fights out there at the time um but you did win the california golden gloves in from 97 to 99. tell us a little bit about your amateur days the tournaments um do you have any favorite memories from the amateurs not really you know it was really hard to get a fight it was probably more discouraging than um, positive because every time you got ready nobody would be there at the fight and uh it was tough um being an amateur i was an amateur for eight years and i only had like nine fights so it was it was a hard hard yeah that's year. a long time yeah yeah i think i was uh, i think i started competing in 2002 and i went pro in 2006 so i was only pro four years but i only had i don't know 14 or 15 fights yeah so it wasn't easy it, it wasn't easy getting fights whereas the guys that, that long would have had over 100 fights by then yeah <clears throat> um you did make your pro debut july 2nd 1999 winning by tko at 51 seconds in the mm -hmm. first round Tell us how that felt having such an impressive victory on just your first pro fight. No, it was, it was, it felt good. It was surprising, but yeah, it felt good. Yeah. That, I mean, that first round knockout, first time out. I mean, you can't really do much better than that. That's no. like, that's so exciting. I think my first fight was very similar to that. If I think pretty sure it was my first fight was a first round knockout. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> like that right. was, I was just kind of surprised that it ended so quickly, but <clears throat> it's a, it makes a very big difference when you take the headgear off and you have smaller gloves. Much funner. Yeah. And it's uh, it makes a very big difference as far as power um, shot placements. And, and I don't know, it's just way different. It, you can see so much better too. So it, it makes a huge difference. And um, so the, the fight we were just talking about, June 16th, 2000 at the Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas. You had your first defeat against another boxing icon, of course, in the sport of women's boxing, Laura Serrano. You did lose by TKO in the third round, but I know that there was a lot of controversy in that fight. Mm -hmm. um, you had specifically said the fight shouldn't have been stopped. You felt you oh. won the first round. Despite the knockdown in the second round, you came back strong and were being like pulled off of her and being separated at the end of the second. But the ref did stop it in the third. Um, I believe you were knocked down in the third round. Is that when he stopped it, or was he was she what, was just, what happened with that fight? Because I was on the ropes and she was just punching, and I'm like, and then he just said, "That's it." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "I'm not." Oh, he just stepped in and stopped it because she was yeah. throwing a, a flurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I knew there was a lot of controversy with that one because um, I definitely felt you won the first round. The second round did have a knockdown, but you came back strong. And then, yeah, you didn't get to finish. It's just that um, you did. You, you did end up fighting her again, though, right? I did. I fought her three times, and I yeah, I was gonna say three times. Her. I lost every time, but I swear the last one I should have won. It was on uh, televised Fox Sports and or ESPN, and 
should have won that fight. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's all good. Yeah. The, the bad thing about that is, um, Kelsey, great to see you. Oh, Women's Boxing Channel says, yay. <laughs> I knew you'd be excited for this one, Women's Boxing Channel. Um, Kelsey, you are one of the main players of the first renaissance, what I call the first belt era. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. She definitely is. And she had many belts to show. I just yeah. named them all. I don't know if you were here for that Women's Boxing Channel. We'll talk about it again, though. Um, so on August 12th, though, same year, 2000, you did came back, come back and you won a 10-round unanimous decision over Cynthia Prouder for the WIBA mm -hmm. America's Featherweight title, um, your first title. So tell us a little bit about that fight and how exciting it was to get your first title. Oh, it was a great fight. Yeah, Cynthia's a great fighter. So, you know, always makes a good championship when you when you fight against a good fighter. So, yeah, I was really Yeah, excited. and you had several fights with her as well. I did. She's a tough girl. Yeah, tough. Tough as nails, for sure. Um, let's see. Collins asked, what was the difference between Ana Hulatin and Ronda Luna? <laughs> Ronda Luna fought. Anna Hulitin wanted to hold and <laughs> cry to the ref that I was fighting, you know. You know, she you know, uh, she noticed yeah, she, Anna, she had a lot of movement. Yeah, she went she, she was crying. It's all good. Rana Luna fought. Rana Luna's a tough Rana girl. Luna was a she was very you two had a very similar style. It was punch for punch. Um, right. yeah, Rana Luna definitely had a, a very good entertaining style as well She's for sure good. um women's boxing channel says this is how i rank them from back in the day um oh you're talking about the fight oh r1 9303 wibf 9903 wbf 96 to 03 97 to 03, iba 9703 i WB. Are you talking about when she held the? You must be talking about when she held the belts. Yeah, maybe Th those were all the belts. I'm pretty sure that I just yeah, I just said she has several. Um, back to the fights though. November seventh, two thousand and two, you celebrated your birthday mm -hmm. by winning the IFBA World Featherweight Title by unanimous decision over another boxing icon that we like to call of today, Layla McCarter. Um, if I recall, though, there was a little hostility between the two of you for this fight. Um, I know Layla said after she definitely felt she won the fight. Um, tell us a little bit about how that fight fit, how that fight went. And um, was there a lot of controversy between the two of you? No. Or was it just all for show? You got a great jab, long reach, but I won that fight. And I'm so happy I did. And it was, it was my, the best day of my life. Yes. The... Winning the title, I mean, title fights, I, I try to explain to people, I mean, all fights are great fights and they're all great memories, but there is no way to describe the feeling of having your hand raised and winning a title. Like it, it's undescribable, totally yeah. undescribable. Um, 2003, though, president I, of the IFBA, um, Judy Coolis, did present you with Fighter of the Year Award. Tell us a little bit about... Um, that and how important that award was for you from the IFBA. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're like, I think they're the one and only women's boxing pioneers of the sport to support women. And uh, Judy is a great woman. She, I, I, I went with her to Korea and she's, she's, a, she's a class lady and I, I love being with her. She's a, her and her husband are amazing people. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, speaking of that, it was in July 2nd of 2007 and at the Pachanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California. That's where I had the pleasure of meeting you in person because we were fighting on the same all women's card on the Best Damn Sports Show. Um, I did get to watch you live in action. So that was amazing. I think it was only my third, maybe my third pro fight. So I was new on the scene. Um, there were so many amazing to the icon legends on that card yeah. today um that i was so ecstatic to meet i mean I, the list goes on and on you were there chevelle hallback that's where i met her for the first time um even though she wasn't fighting kalisha west was there I, she came up and i met her 
um, oh my gosh, um, Terry Blair was there, uh, Melissa Hernandez, oh my God, the list goes on and on. Uh, but phenomenal fight. I did get to watch you in action defeat Donna Biggers by unanimous decision to retain your IFBA featherweight mm -hmm. title. Um, I always tell people that was one of the highlights of my career because it was an all women's card. Um, and there were so many legend fighters on that. Um, was that the only time you fought on an all female card or did you get to do that often? Uh, there was, uh, I fought in Waco, Texas. There was an all, all female card in Waco. Um, on TV and it was live on ESPN. I didn't make the telecast, but that was another one. But but the best was definitely in Pachanga. Yeah, and it was um, televised on the Best Damn Sports Show. Right. Um, yeah. So that yeah, that was an awesome experience. Um, Judy Coolis was great. I wish I had um, stuck with uh, fighting with her after that. Um, but just different opportunities, different places took us other places. But um amazing i had a great experience with her and um yeah it was it was probably one of the best fights i had was fighting there uh so it was very exciting um and we had discussed this earlier or i discussed it for your highlight reel that we were talking about you've been in the ring with the best of the best i mean just to name a few of them which is more than a few but um they were asking anna hulatin ronda luna melissa hernandez jackie nava melissa del val Layla McCarter, Joe Wyman, Alicia Ashley, Karina Van Rijk, De Groot, Laura Serrano, Yvonne Torino, to, just to name a few. And I'm at least half of those have already been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, so great, great legend fighters. Tell us which one of those you feel like was your toughest fight and maybe your not toughest fight and why? You know, none of them were. I think my toughest fight is myself. That's that is so true though yeah. so true i would agree with that actually now that you say that that is very true no one can defeat us except ourselves right that's right yeah that is true um but i think it's amazing that what i tell people i think the the main difference between today's era and our era which i was a little bit after you but we fought at the same time was that almost every single fighter almost 100 percent of the females wanted to fight the best fighters yeah. um, and, and nobody ducked or dodged anybody, which, I mean, it's still fairly even that way. Um, but you saw a lot of great, great wars back then. And you were in several with some, yeah. some very great fighters, um, but so entertaining. Um, I try to tell people all day long, I would rather watch a female fight over oh. a male fight any day of the week because it's oh. all action. It's all excitement. And you just don't know what's going to happen because it's it's 100% go. Right. Um, well, most of them. I guess we were talking about a few fighters that you fought that like to run and bicycle. Um, and we, we, did, <laughs> we did fight a few of those. I did have some of those, too, that would not stand still. And I'm like, this is not even boxing. This is, yeah. we're not pedal yeah. biking. Um, but, I mean, everybody has their own style. So I guess I can't really... We had a similar style. Go forward. Bring it. Go forward and throw punches. Um, but yeah, uh, I did fight a few girls that were on their back pedal the whole time and just we would not stop moving. We fought. We didn't make a good fight. We would have made an amazing fight. Um, yeah. And I was fighting at 126, but you were fighting mostly at 122. But we I still, you went up in weight though. Yeah, I should have been winning. You fought at what? Once, did you fight at one? You fought at 126. I fought at 130 with, with, with weights in my pocket. Yes. Um, I fought the first time I <laughs> the first time I went up in weight because I was naturally 126. I fought at what I walked around at. People always asked me too. You actually weigh. I said, um, I don't starve myself. Now, ideally, me walking around at 126, I walked around at like 125. So I fought at 126. Most people that naturally weighed that would have went down to probably like 112. Right. And I wasn't doing that. I, I said, I'm going to eat what I want. I'm going to train the way I, like I'm not starving my body and dehydrating myself over and over and over again. So I fight it when I walk around it. I'll go up if I have to. But I did one time I went down to 122 to fight Alicia Ashley. And I'm like, it's four pounds. I can lose four pounds. Poor thing. That was the hardest thing I ever did in my entire life. Like I seriously didn't think I was going to make weight. I didn't even eat for like three days. 
because I couldn't lose there. I didn't have anything to lose. I was, there was no fat on me to come off. Um, and I'm like, oh, it's four pounds. Yeah. It's not easy guys. It's not easy losing weight. So no, I like you fought at what I walked around at. I was not starving myself or no. going on these special diets. Like no. I wasn't doing it. Um, let's see. I got I don't want to miss your guys' questions though. While I'm going through mine. Um, women's boxing channel says now I'm highlighting my take of how the sanctioning bodies ranked back in the day in my second post. I think from 2004, the second belt era started to take over their domination for WBA, WBC, WBO, IBF, IBO. I see what you're saying. Yes. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. I agree. First belt era. Yes. And then they kind of like broke off. I see what you're saying. Um, women's boxing channel. Great answer. My toughest fight was myself. It was a great answer. Nobody has ever said that. And I've asked that question on, I think every single interview I've done and nobody has gave me that answer. That's a good one. I might use that. Um, Eddie Barrington weighing in with weights in my pocket. That's hardcore. Yes. That's we, did that. <laughs> we did do that because the first time I fought Mia St. John, I was fighting at 126. I was a four day replacement for Rita Figueroa who was also trained by the same trainer as me. She got injured. And I was like, I'll take the fight. I don't care what weight it is. I just want to fight. She was a name. So I wanted to fight her. So I took the fight on four days notice. Of course, walking around at 125, that fight was at 135. So yeah, I had to weigh in with all my clothes on. And I had like, yeah, like you said, weights and stuff in my pocket. Because you can only be within so many pounds or they won't sanction it. Um, okay. So I've been there. I did it. Um. You were trained, though, by two-time world champion Buddy McGirt, which I always thought was pretty amazing and pretty cool um, that you had a world-class trainer work okay. with you, especially back in that era. Um, so tell us a little bit about what it was like working with him. Um, and were you the only female that he worked with at the time? Well, my, you know, my whole career, I pretty much trained myself. I never really had a trainer. So when I met Buddy, I was at the end of my career, and it was pretty amazing to be taught by somebody that knows what they're doing, you know, and um, it's high respect and training a Turgotti, training a Antonio Tarver, the best. And um, uh, I was really humbled, but it was so awesome to go to Florida and have training camps like normal fighters, which, you know, something women don't really get to do, especially in my era. Um, yes. So, I mean, he was, I think he trained uh, Ali at one point because I remember being in camp with her, um, but I, I never saw any other girls there. Okay. Well, yes, it was late in your career that you met up with him. Um, but I, and I kind of always tell people, I did most of the training myself because the gym was, I, I at towards the end of my career or at the beginning of my pro career, I trained with legendary trainer, Sam Colonna. Um, amazing, amazing person. Love him still to this day. Um, the gym was over an hour away. Um, so I would, I would travel to the gym and, you know, he trained a lot of well-known guys that were always, in, they were always camps going on. Um, so you'd go up there and if you're lucky, you'd get to do the mitts with him. Otherwise you're really just doing your own workout and then, yeah. you know, you go for sparring days or whatever, um, or you're working with a different person. Um, so it got to the point where I was literally just going for sparring, um, yeah. for sparring days, just to get sparring. And then my husband now, my, he's my husband now was learning and he was fighting amateurs too. So he, he, and he was really good with mitts. So he just started doing mitts with me and all my workouts. And so then he was finally, it was like, well, I'm just going to get my license. So that way we don't have to pay, pay the fees to have, yeah. you know, Sam in the corner. Um, saved a little bit of money that way, but still we'll go to the gym and do sparring and stuff, but it's hard, especially when there's so many other, when you're in a well-known gym, like Windy city gym and then, you know, you working with buddy McGirt and all the other fighters, it's hard to get that one-on-one -on -one attention that you really need back then. It, I think it's totally different today, but sure. back in our time, it was harder. Um, you did also though, um, held the WIBF America's featherweight the California women's featherweight, WIBA, America's junior lightweight, IFBA world featherweight, 
IBA Super Bantamweight and GBU Featherweight titles. I think I got them all, hopefully. Um, but I think I already know the answer to this question, but which one of the titles means the most to you? Uh, uh, Jerry Sites was a great fight. Um, I really like that title. That's the IBA, but I got to go with the IFBA because they supported me. I support, I defended my title over seven times. Yes. And so I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, IFBA, definitely. Yes. Yeah, you did. Um, I know, defended that belt so many times. Um, and every single one of those fights was amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I figured that was the answer, but Hey, I mean, I didn't want to, I didn't want to speculate. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, women's boxing channel says, interesting. You said everyone wanted to fight everyone back then. Not sure that's true with Layla and Mia St. John. These days we see Jonas avoiding Terry Harper for undisputed and McCaskill avoiding Sandy Ryan. Again, for Undisputed, what do you say about that, Kelsey? Yeah, I, well, and I, what is Boxing Channel the most? I did say most of the girls didn't duck people. But I guess Kelsey wants to know what you think about. Um, back then, he said, not sure. He said, Layla and Mia St. John didn't want to fight everybody. And nowadays, Jonas, Jonas is avoiding Terry Harper. McCaskill's avoiding Sandy Ryan. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, people pick their fights and their records look good. I mean, that's that's the way it is with guys' fights. I mean, yeah, I that's true. I wish I had a perfect record, but well, I me mean, too. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, but um, but in order to get those perfect padded records, you kind of have to pick and choose your opponent opponents, yeah. and but then I mean, I don't know. To me. The difference between that is to me, when I look at a fighter, I don't look at what their record is. I look at who they fought and where they fought them. Absolutely. That defines to me how great of a fighter that person is or was. Um, I don't look at undefeated records. I could get or less, especially in women's boxing. Right. Um, if you have an undefeated record, um, to me, that just means you have a padded record and you've been protected. Um, nine times out of 10, I can't say that for everybody, but nine times out of 10, if you have an undefeated record, um, in women's boxing, it's because you are protected and you have a padded record. Um, yeah. not always, but usually. So yeah. I always judge fighters on who they fought and where they fought them, what the fighters were, they were ranked that they were fighting. Um, and all of that kind of takes a part in how I rank fighters. Um, I think women's boxing channel that nobody should dodge anybody. Everybody should fight the best out there because how can you be the best if you're not fighting the best? Right. Absolutely. So I, I, I don't care about Pat. I don't care about undefeated records. That tells me nothing. I can say somebody that's 20 and oh, and hasn't fought one person that's ranked or has a winning record or was a threat. I don't even call them anything yet. Yeah. Because they haven't proven themselves. You have to prove yourselves by fighting people that are the best or considered the best or other champions or other top ranked fighters. Sure. Uh, what's up, Michael Orr? How are you? Glad to see you. Um, being fe females, though, in the <clears throat> in this still male dominant sport, especially back in our time eras, we faced a lot of BS and like stuff behind the scenes that people never really talked about. I know I have, I've talked about several of things I've went through um, being female that shouldn't happen um, or we shouldn't have to go through um, throughout my career on the show. Can you tell us, is there anything that you can think of that sticks in your head that was like just total crap or you shouldn't have had to deal with or go through? We don't have to give full details, but like one or two things that you had to go through that, a guy wouldn't have to go through or we shouldn't have to go through just because we're females. Oh God. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a million of them. I think, I think we just tolerate stuff. You know, we, we learn to tolerate things, but I think I fought New Jersey and, and I had to get like a female exam. I'm like, what the fuck? I just, that was like hell. I mean, why would you do that to anybody before? I mean, I could right. get, a guy, I get a, you know, a, a genital exam before a fight. I mean, what the, I don't even get that. Yeah. I, I, don't think I, 
I've had that happen. <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. And then in Cancun, uh, I mean, there was no toilet paper in the bathroom. I mean, just little stuff. Yeah. That was kind of weird, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, most of the stuff isn't big stuff. It's just ridiculous. Like, yeah. stuff we shouldn't have to deal with. Right. Um, I can remember a fight in Michigan where they wanted me to get the pregnancy test, but they didn't have the pregnancy test. But they said I had to go to a doctor, so I had to drive like an hour the day of the fight to get, or the day before the of the weigh-in to go get this. Oh my God. There's just so many stories, yeah. but I had to go all the way to the specific doctor to get this pregnancy test and all these tests done and then drive all the way back. Like I was running everywhere, like trying to do stuff. And I'm like, I'm not supposed to be going anywhere. I'm supposed to be resting. Right. Like yeah. you wouldn't have a guy running around doing all this crap. You would bring it to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just lots of things. Um, who would you consider to be your female boxing, like icons or role models? God, I couldn't name one. <laughs> Did you I say mean, I can't name one? <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, um, nobody has walked the walk, you know, in respect to what I had mentioned, imagined any myself to be, you know, um, I honestly couldn't couldn't name one. No, nope. well, I mean, you got a male role model or somebody yeah. that you like, um, yeah. and, and you know, back then, there, I it's hard for people. It people know more um, past fighters from our era, which is sad. But then before us, I mean, I knew of people because when I started boxing, I was following boxing. Um, you know, past fighters from before you, obviously. Um, but I always tell people. <sighs> It's harder to think of before women starting getting noticed. I mean, we got a little bit of exposure, not nearly like what today was, but before mm -hmm. us, there was like no exposure. Yeah. Nothing. So it's hard for people to think of people from before our era or, I mean, other than Layla Ali and Christy Martin, um, I there I wasn't have, much. I don't have much on respect it. for them. And it's sad that that our sport has those as the the icons, you know, because there's so many more great fighters um, than than they portrayed. Yes, hundred percent. So many more from way before us, like back decades and decades that people don't even know. Right. Um, Women's Boxing Channel says I'm researching into a new way of ranking all time pound for pounds for women. From the first belt era right through to today, it's start based and will eliminate it's oh it's stat based and will eliminate who thinks what. It's what boxing desperately is missing. It will encompass around 100 fighters or so. Kelsey's going to be in that top 100. Well, I would I would hope that Kelsey is definitely in that top 100. The criteria is complex and will be published. Well, I want a copy, and I would really hope that I'm in that top 102 women's boxing channel. I mean, I'm just saying. But yeah. yes, Kelsey definitely deserves to be in that top 100, 100%. I mean, I feel blessed <laughs> that I had the opportunity to have 54 fights. I mean, how many women can you tell me that had that many fights? No, no I only, I can't even remember. I probably had like 15 or so somewhere around their pro fights, um, which I could have kept fighting, but I got pregnant with my second daughter, um, after like two years after I won the WBC title. Um, I had defended that a few times. Um, I had fought for some other vacant titles that I got robbed of overseas, um, mm -hmm. and things like that, or I mean, defending titles, um, that I didn't ever get the opportunity to get. But, um, after I got pregnant with my second one, I wasn't making any money and I had two kids now. Um, my first kid was like, we lived in the gym. I was at work and went straight to the gym and we were at the gym all night. You know how it is. Um, yeah. And then having two kids, I was like, I've already won a title. I'm not, my most money I ever made was $4,000 for that title in Mexico. I wasn't making money at all. So I'm like, you know, maybe it's time for me to just be a mom. Do I miss it every single day? Uh, but it is what it is. Um, so that's why I, it's a dangerous sport and 
I had two kids to think about now and I didn't want anything to happen. So that's kind of why I retired. I could have kept fighting for sure, but that's kind of where my mindset was with it. Um, but also um, in 2020, you were inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame. Um, tell us what it was like. I know when I got the phone call from Sue, I didn't. I think I was speechless probably for the first time ever in a while. But um, tell us about the phone call from Sue Fox with the news that you were being inducted into Hall of Fame and what that means to you. Well, I kept putting it off because I was hoping to get more fights. But I think uh, during the, you know, um, when the COVID stuff it was it was you couldn't get fights so i finally said okay i'll do it but it was you know it's it's a help help getting me closure to putting on my identity of a fighter you know because it's been very difficult yeah to, to stop saying that i'm a fighter and i'm i'm just a an ordinary individual you know so yeah i think uh that helped the psychology of of uh stopping fighting because my god i was i was fighting for over you know i was pro for 16 years and an amateur for like four or five years so yeah it, it was like half my life so it was tough yes um i can i can yeah i totally agree with you 100 percent. because when i made that decision and i thought about it every single year i'm like i think i'm gonna come out of retirement i think i'm gonna come out of retirement and then i had I just, I have a son that'll be two Saturday. So I have two daughters and we just had a son that he'll be two on Saturday. And, at, but I had him five days before I turned 40. So let's just, and, but when, when I see, saw that women's boxing was starting to get paid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and televised like within the last four years or so. Um, when women's boxing really started taking a boom, a lot of girls were coming out of retirement mm -hmm. from our era, a lot right. of them. Um, right. And I, man, the itch is worse than it's ever been and wanting to come out just because I'm like, I just need one, one of those big paydays. Right. Um, just one. Um, but the problem with it is, is you'd have to rebuild and you'd have to start from scratch and build your way back up the ranks and even to get the opportunity to have one of those fights. And I'm like, that's a couple of years and I'm going to be 42 this year. So I don't think that would probably be the best idea, <laughs> but it's definitely <laughs> tempting. It's definitely tempting. Um, so I would say probably that's the reason you decided to finally retire was just lack of fights. I'm assuming. Yeah. Correct? There's no, there was no opportunity and uh, nobody one fight so yeah i had to finally say okay i guess that's it yeah i mean i still tell people i'm a fighter i mean i say i'm retired but i'm once a fighter you're always a fighter always yeah i can't i can't stop i mean i train every day yeah i mean it, it, it it's 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 just it's in your blood it once is. you're a fighter you're always a fighter yeah. um women's boxing channel let's see then they are all cross-referenced against like for like fighters from both eras that's interesting, Women's Boxing Channel. I'm interested to see what you come up with, for sure. Um, so what do you think of women's boxing today versus our era? Yeah, they're lucky. I mean, they get TV. They get um, they get normal training camps. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for them. I, I'm not sure that they're at the era that they should be or that the publicity that they should be, but I'm very um, happy. Um, that hopefully they're getting the recognition that they deserve, which I don't think they are. I think it could be more magnified, but yes. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I definitely, it's come mountains. Um, we've come a very long way. I can't say that we haven't, but we still have a very long way to go um, yeah. to get yeah. for, for equality, but that's caused all sports, all female sports, but sure. um, yeah, we're not we're not even close to being equal, but we're we're definitely making strides. Right. Um, so hopefully within the next decade or so, we'll mm. be a little bit closer. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever happen that we're 100 percent equal, but we'll keep fighting for it. They'll keep fighting for it. I um, thought it would would actually magnify that, but it it I I'm not really impressed with what's happened. You know, since she won the Olympics. Yeah. 
with Clarissa. Yeah. Um, I mean, even the fight that she just had, I mean, it was huge. And I mean, they publicized it and uh, main event, new venue, like all this stuff. But yeah, yeah I, it still could have been bigger, like right. with the promotion and, and the exposure. I don't know. He deserves bigger. Yeah, definitely. They could have did. Uh, I always think it would be cool to do when they have, um, I forget what it's called, but like when Mayweather used to have all his fights, they would have them sit at the table and the guy would like interview them like right before the fight. Yeah. I can't remember what they called it, but you know what I'm talking about. Oh. Um, that they should do that for the women. Totally. And like follow them around for like their training camps and stuff. Yeah. Like that would be more exposure. Like they used to do the, I can't, what the heck did they call it? It was like behind the scenes. Um, HBO or something. Showtime. Yeah, it was on HBO when they had HBO, but whatever. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. I do. But that they should do that for women. Like follow them and like get little tidbits of their training all the way up through camp and mm -hmm. and then do that interview. Yeah, they need to do that for women. Yeah, agreed. Um, are there any of the current fighters today that you um, really like or are following you think will be definitely for sure next Hall of Famers? Women? Mm hmm. Mm. No, I don't really know any of them. I mean, like, like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot because, you know, the amateur is really good now for women, but I really don't know any of them. Did you see the, um, the Katie Taylor, um, Cameron fight? No, you met, you didn't see that one. No. Um, that wasn't that long ago, but Katie Taylor lost, um, for the first time to Chantel Cameron. It was a good fight. I saw pieces of it. Yeah. Maybe like highlight reels or something. It was a good fight, but I don't know. I'm not thought it was, I thought it was really close. I don't know. I don't know for sure that that's the way it went, but, um, I'm hoping they rematch. I'm yeah. hoping they get a rematch. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm eager to see who Clarissa gets next because I can't. I think the only one um, was it Cruz. Maybe would be a good one, but I don't know. It's hard to like find competition that I think would be good competition for her right now. Yeah, seems like we need more women fighters in in the in the game. Yeah, I mean, there's there's ones coming up. They're just not there yet. Um, Tony, what's up, Tony? Um, he said, women's boxing today is only thanks to the work you all did. Well, thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. Um, and I try to say that every day, which is another big reason I did the show was because I feel like past fighters have kind of just been put on the back burner with current fighters. They kind of forget and think that they just made it happen overnight and that all of us past fighters kind of paved the way for them. Um, Women's Boxing Channel says, Kelsey makes a great point, as you have in past shows. Fighters yesterday deserve much credit for preparing under different conditions and rewards. Facts. Uh, we all worked full-time jobs and trained on the side. So boxing was a side gig, not our main focus. Uh, we, I don't think any one of us ever had an actual training camp. Yeah. No. <laughs> we don't even know what training camp is. Yeah. Uh, our training camp is going to work from nine to five or whatever, getting off and going to the gym for a couple hours and then going to sleep and getting up and doing it all over again. That's our training camp. Uh, we didn't know what it was like to have three workouts a day and a nutritionist and a specialist and a well, sometimes a training coach. And <laughs> I go to the gym and nobody was there. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't know anything about that. Uh, it'd be interesting to see a training camp because I've never been in one, uh, but that's what it is. Makes me look always a tennis player or a golf golf player. Right. Why did I pick boxing? I don't know. Because we're a little cuckoo, I guess. We're a little crazy. Um, Women's Boxing Channel also says, when I have completed my research, I intend to create a spreadsheet so anyone can input a fighter's name and record and record to see where they would rank. I don't know, Women's Boxing Channel, you got a good thing going there. I'm super excited to see how how all of the fighters from all time 
rank on that list. Definitely interested. Tony Issue says, uh, Savannah Marshall rematch for Shields. I think that's a waste of time, Tony. Hmm. I don't I don't want to see a rematch with Savannah Marshall and Shields. No. It wasn't even a close fight at all. It, I want to see Kelsey Jeffries versus Jackie Nava again. Yeah, Kelsey, ver Kelsey versus Jackie. Well, hey, you we could do we should put together like a series of like old school fighters. It's like you know how they do like the celebrity boxing? Oh yeah. We should put together like a series with all old school retired fighters. And then we all come up, we all go and we, we fight on this like non-sanctioned <laughs> series. Yeah, totally. That would be cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. That would actually, and I could, I could tell you tons of past fighters would do it. hundred yeah, percent. I'd do it. hundred percent. I could name probably 15 right now that would do it. Just off the top of my head. That's a good idea. Uh, Eric, we need to, um, Eric and Michael Orr, we need to set up a, like a old school women's celebrity boxing event for all like retired females. They have connections. We can make it happen. Let's do it. Uh, women's boxing channel says if someone said i'm in a camp back then they would think ffs she's sitting around campfires get back in the gym lol facts i want to see shields versus shen Sh Sh i never can say her name so Deja green i want to see that fight too women's boxing channel um i think that would be a good fight i would like to see that too hopefully that happens within the next couple of years she, uh, Sadej Shadeja is on her way for sure. Um, she's been very impressive lately. Um, have you seen her fight at all? I've, I haven't seen like a, only one of her full fights, but, um, I don't even know who she is. So she's new. She's only, she doesn't have a lot of fights yet, uh, but she throws a lot of, uh, she has a lot of punch output. Um, and she seems to have really good power. Um, I think she should be a little bit of a competition for Clarissa. Um, yeah, but she's up and coming. So she's, um, I can't remember women's boxing channel. Who did she fight in her last fight out that kind of gave her sparks? That's kind of when her name came about in her last fight that she had. Um, she beat somebody good and I can't think of who it was, but, um, it was very impressive. Uh, but that's so she's brand new, like getting spotlight. So it's it's not somebody that like has been out there for a while. Um, I just heard of her because of this last fight she had. So I looked her up. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, she looks like to be a very promising up and coming new newer fighter for sure. Um, I watched her fight with Ellen Sederuz. I don't know who that is. Oh, she fought Saturday. I didn't even know she fought. I have to look it up. I'll have to look it up. I didn't watch it. I didn't know she fought. Um, so is there any like big things in overall in your career that you regret or you wish that you would have done differently? Not one. No, me neither. I'm really comfortable with, with my career. Yeah. People ask me that a lot. Um, if I would have taken different paths and I said, you know, if I would have took different paths and not fought the fights that I fought and got the losses that I got from not getting decisions in their hometown and defending titles and, I don't think I would have, um, I don't think I would have made the hall of fame and I don't think I would have been remembered. So I don't, I wouldn't have done anything differently. Yeah, me neither. Um, I know that you've talked about, um, some of your, some of your, so I, I don't, I didn't ever talk about it in the past because I don't want people to say I'm making excuses. Um, but I do feel that actually maybe, there's only one that maybe could have been questionable, but the rest of the losses that I have, I still feel like I won. Um, but they were in their hometowns. They were defending titles. So I lost um, fights. But you have some similar scenarios um, with your losses. Do you feel like, I know the one that you talked about earlier, you felt like you won. Is there any other ones you feel like you were just completely robbed? Well, I mean, yeah, Manava and then, I fought uh, in Europe, in Germany, 
my first fight there with um I don't remember her name that I fought uh, in in Germany my for my first WBF title. Yeah, I won that fight. It was an easy fight. Even Nava was an easy fight. I I think that's why I got the draw. I got dropped because it was so easy. I was like, what? But I still think I won that fight. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. I'm just I'm so lucky that I was even able to be there and to fight. You know. Yeah, and to put on such great fights. Yeah, for sure. Um, what advice would you give to all the young girls out there that are up and coming and wanting to get into boxing? Michelle Boro, thank you, Women's Boxing Channel. Um, yeah. Um, I would, you know, just just never stop believing in yourself and just um, train like you're 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 the fucking worst fighter in the world and you want to be the best. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's good advice. Yeah. See, I love getting, I love that question every time I ask because the, the answers are so different every time, but they're so like, they're so good answers. Like there's just good advice. I'm a nurse. I give you it WBC? LOL. Well, Michael, I mean, we needed to put together a um, celebrity boxing series for retired female fighters that miss fighting. Like for real. Um, since retirement though, are you still in, I know you still train daily and you still do Everything. all that. Are you involved, um, with boxing at all? Are you, are you like training or helping other fighters or are you doing anything outside of just training with boxing still? You know, we have a great gym in, um, Coachella Valley in, um, in Indio that I'm at the, the uh, I'm there often. I'm sparring with their guys and helping whoever I can. Okay. Uh, it's so yeah, kind of like assistant trainers. Yeah, they have a great camp out there. They have good fighters coming out of there. So I'm there when I can. Yeah, Golden Boy promotes in Indio. And I think there's a girl fight coming up on the 8th. The girl from Canada. I forget her name. Oh. She's our age. She's old. Michael, who is it? Um, so the, the um, talk and fight that hosts my podcast they're out of Canada. Um, and Michael Orr is also, he's in the chat, but he also has um, several podcasts on Talk and Fight. Um, he, he knows everything about boxing there is to know. Every single fighter, fighter he can tell you about him. But so Michael, say, who's from Canada that's fighting? Um, Hernandez fought her before she's in Canada. I forget. Uh, is, is it Olivia Garula? No, but she's a badass. No, not her, but. The other one, there's another one there that's high and mighty. Michael, who is it? Tell us who it is in the chat. No. Diana no. Dutra? No. No, that's not her. Thank you, Eddie, though. I don't think that's it. Michael, big big name, our age. No. Marie, no. She's a, she's a, uh, she's a, from a, Canada. Right. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I she did. did. Yeah, we were just talking about that. She did. Um, Michael Eric, who's the girl from Canada that's like our age that's going to be fighting soon? Mary oh. Spencer? No. I don't even... Mary Spencer's new, isn't she? I don't think she's from our era. Maybe. Um, so tell everybody, what do you... Um, aside, outside of boxing... Tell everybody, what have you been doing since retirement? I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. I'm a hospice nurse. I was a ER nurse. I'm a, um, I am was a forensic sexual assault nurse. Now I'm a, uh, I help with people that are dying and I love it. That is like one of the best uh, jobs that someone can have um, to help people pass over. Um, and it takes a special person because it's hard. I don't know. For me, it would be extremely like I would get connected to every single one of them, and it would be I would I be so sad I every do. single time. It's tough. Um, yeah, That's lucky. Yeah, um, but for them to have somebody there to connect with, especially for those that don't have family or close loved ones or whatever um, that are alone, um, yeah. to have someone to be there with them so they don't feel alone. 
uh, amazing. I, I knew you as an ER news, nurse and then now you're doing this. And I, I wanted everybody to know that in case they didn't know. I think that's phenomenal um, that you do what you do. Um, so Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank um, you. Is there anything um, that we didn't talk about that you would like to let people know or that you'd like to talk about? Um, no, I just, you know, it, life is tough. You know, I want people to just um, dig deep and just believe in themselves and fight for whoever they want to be. Yes, totally. Yelena Murdovich. Yes, that's her. Okay. Yeah. She is fighting soon. No, she's fighting. Now, that, now yeah. how I cannot think about that. I tried to fight Yelena Murdovich so many freaking times. They would not fight me. No, I don't doubt it. They would not fight me. Um, fighting isn't much, so I, I don't know what kind of fight it's going to be. But Yeah, I don't know who she's fighting, um, but I did see that she was fighting soon. Um, yeah, Yelena Murdovich, um, Ina Menzer, I tried to fight. I can't tell you how many times, but she was oh, from yeah. Germany, I think. Um, my God, I can't even think of all of them, but they would. none of them would fight me, and it sucks. Of course not. No way. Sucks. fight. Um, I really wanted to go to, to fight, um, Ina Menzer in Germany, like so bad, but yeah, me too. Yeah. You too, probably. Um, but yeah, cause we, we, we never did pass. We never did cross pass. I can't say, you know, I can't say I wish both... I would have fought you because I, I think you're an awesome fighter. And what, and when I met you, I thought it was amazing. So I never really saw myself fighting you, but I think it would have been a fabulous, it would have been an awesome fight for sure. For sure. She's fighting Kalista Silgato. I don't know anything about her women's boxing channel. Um, you tell us who's going to win the fight. Cause I have no idea who that is. I know Yelena is a great fighter. Um, fighting her tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Um, I know Yelena was a good fighter. Um, she is definitely our age getting up there. And I don't know if, especially if she's fighting a younger fighter, I think she's lost several recently. If I recall, um, she might be going a little bit past her time, but I can't say I wouldn't do the same if I didn't have kids. Thank <laughs> I you probably still, if I didn't have my kids, I probably would still be fighting. Right. You know, for I'm sure fighting. at 42, I'd probably still be in there. Um, so I can't even say anything. Um, tell everybody though where they can follow you on social media. Uh, occasionally, I post positive quotes on my website and uh, uh, W. I mean, uh, 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 Facebook. But no, you do. I, yeah, you you post a lot of positive things on your Facebook. What are you talking about? Like every day. I like to make people smile. You do, yeah. Like almost, guys. If you're not following Kelsey and you want to follow her on Facebook, is the biggest one that at least I've seen, but she posts like the most positive and inspiring posts, like for people, like her posts are awesome and they're very uplifting, uplifting. So yeah, if you want to get some uplifting, positive um, quotes and info, yeah, follow her on Facebook. Fighting at Fantasy Springs Casino, Indio Salgado is 24, 16, and 4 with 16 KO. Oh, 21, not 24. 21, 16, and 4. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I then I would say Murdovich might have a chance. Yeah, absolutely. She might have a chance. Um, she's 35 and Elena's 40. Not too much difference. Then it could be a good fight. But I think Elena will probably take it in that scenario then. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Um, is, uh, is it televised, Women's Boxing Channel? Is it on? Is it televised? DAZN thing. I have to see if I can watch it. Um, well, is there any, before we let Kelsey go, y'all, is anybody else in the chat want have any specific questions for Kelsey? Otherwise, I'm not going to take up any more of her time. I'm going to let her get back to doing what she's doing. Two-inch height difference? That don't really matter. No. I was always a shorter fighter. I think so was Kelsey. I was always the shortest fighter. I don't, I don't think the height really makes a difference. I'm short, no reach. Yeah, short, no reach. I mean, I had a pretty decent reach, so I was told for my height, but I always was the shorter, less reach fighter out of everybody I fought. 
I don't think the only person that I think I fought that was even like the same height as me was Olivia Garula. <laughs> Um, and I might have been like a hair taller than her. Actually, that she's in the poster behind me. She's we're like good. we're like the same height. Um, she's a good fight. She's a real fighter. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I no, everybody was taller than me. I was always shorter. It's Golden Boy promotion, so it will be on TV. D A Z N. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to see if I can catch that tomorrow. Um, anyways, if nobody else has any more questions for Kelsey, I'm going to let her go. But Kelsey, it's been such an honor. Um, I'm so happy that I had the chance to meet you in California and fight on the same card as you. It was like an honor to meet you. Um, Ditto. Ditto. Are you going to the inductions this year for the anniversary? Probably negative. I might, but negative. Okay. Um, I was invited back because uh, it's the 10 year anniversary. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some, there's some different fighters that have already been inducted, hopefully. Um, and I just thought I'd see if you were coming, but maybe we'll see you in October if you change your mind at the induction ceremony. Um, but otherwise, it's been a pleasure. Definitely keep in touch. Um, and thanks for taking the time to come on. I hope you have a great night. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you, champ. All right. Ciao. Take care. Well, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again tonight on No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Um, I've always been a huge fan of Kelsey Jeffries. Amazing, amazing, amazing boxing legend icon in my book. Um, one of the, the greatest there ever was. She's, she's phenomenal. Um, literally fought the best of the best of the best over and over and over again. Um, Please do make sure that you like, subscribe, and you're sharing the episodes um, and spread the word. I'd like to get some more people in here every week. Let's grow the audience, grow the audience so we can get some more people in here asking questions, um, talking with each other, talking amongst each other, all that good stuff. Um, please also follow me on my social media pages. Um, I have two on all social media, Brooke. No Mercy, Deardorff, hashtag Millbrook. And then, of course, my podcast page, No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. If you guys follow both of those, you will always be able to see every single week who is going to be on next week so you don't miss a show. Um, and then when you see those posts, if you could do me a favor and share them, share them, share them, share them in groups and pages that you're in so we can get more people in here to learn about the great sport of women's boxing past, future, and present. Okay. Uh, but again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in with me tonight. Um, I appreciate women's boxing channel, uh, Michael or, um, of course, Eddie Barrington in the house. Um, and there was another one, um, Tony, all of you guys, thank you so much for coming. And I appreciate all of you for watching, even if you're not commenting for those of the commenting, thank you for joining. I appreciate you makes it fun talking back and forth with you guys. Uh, but I will see you all again, same time, same place, right here next Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the next amazing episode of No Punches Pulled with No Mercy with me. All right, No Mercy, let's do it. But until then, have a great night. I'll see you all next Tuesday. Remember, punch hard, nothing else matters. Let's go, y'all. Good night.